Happy Sunday! It's December 12, 2021. I'm Lakes Camera Jackson, and welcome to LCJ Live. It's another big Sunday because we've got box office results. We're also gearing up for some major award season nominations that are happening over the next couple of days. If you're tuning in, you want to submit your questions and your comments, you can. Also, we're a few days away from the release of Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man movie. I've got Spidey shirt here with me, hashtag Spidey shirt. And let's celebrate as well, today, the 98th birthday of Bob Barker. The Price is Right host is 98 today. Happy birthday to Bob Barker. We'll talk a little bit more about him and Price is Right and Happy Gilmore and all that in a little bit here on LCJ Live. As always, send in your questions and your comments. Let's start with Box Office. West Side Story is your number one movie in America with $10.5 million. That is low, but I'm not surprised. In the Heights, open to about $11.5 million earlier this year. Dear Evan Hansen, just $7.4 million with a $15 million total. Uh, people are not interested in musicals right now. Some are. Some are not. I think what's going to happen here with West Side Story, which I've seen and I think overall is a pleasant film, but not an extraordinary film, I think what's going to happen is this is a long play. This is a play into the holidays, Christmas and New Year's, and this is a play into the awards season. If this is going to get Best Picture nominations, which it probably will, at least from Critics' Choice tomorrow, and directing for Steven Spielberg, and acting, and technical categories, including the costumes and cinematography, which are excellent, then Disney and 20th Century Studios are going to see this as a long play into March 27. That's when the Academy Awards is. March 27. So about four months. December, January, February, and almost all of March for people to see West Side Story, whether it's in the theaters or eventually when it gets onto home viewing. It's two hours and 36 minutes long. That may force people to say, I'm going to wait to watch it at home. John Coney, thanks for being here on LCJ Live. I'm going to stay at home instead. I had the uh, pleasure of watching it at home and even pausing it at, at one point for a brief uh, bre bathroom break because it's a long film. It really is, and it feels that way. Again, it's a nice film. It's a good film. It's got a few Spielberg touches, though not a lot. Um, but yeah, these long movies, you're talking 236 plus trailers, Plus, if you go to a Regal, these movies don't start on time anyway because they like to push it back a few minutes. So you've got lots of issues and, and people traveling to the theaters, older people wanting to see this. That's a lot. That's a lot for people to handle right now. And New York State is implementing masks again starting tomorrow. So there are going to be some people who say, I don't want to wear a mask for three hours in a, in a movie theater, in a movie. I don't want to do that. I know New York City is already having some, but this is now the entire state of New York starting tomorrow because of the governor's decision. Stephen Crilly, thanks for being here on LCJ Live. So that may really turn some people away. Now, when it comes to Spider-Man this week, some people are going to say, all right, I'm going to go, I'll wear the mask for three hours, fine. But for, in other cases, I could see it being, I'd rather wait and watch it at home. So Disney's going to see how that goes. They know what they've got for Spielberg, and the awards play is going to be huge. They know they'll, they'll get their reward somehow, even if it's not completely with the box office results. Disney also has the number two movie, which is Encanto with 9.4 million. That's close. 10.5 to 9.4. Disney, I'm sure, when the actual results are released tomorrow, is going to want West Side Story on top. Even if it goes down a little bit and Encanto goes up a little bit, they will find a way to make sure West Side Story is number one over Encanto. Because if Encanto was number one over West Side Story this weekend, that would really not look good. Even though it's the same studio, uh, Disney wouldn't want that at all. So Encanto is up to $71.3 million. It is officially the highest grossing G or PG rated family movie of this entire pandemic period. It passed Warner Brothers' Space Jam A New Legacy, which made seventy and a half, and now Encanto with $71.3 is the highest grossing family film of the past uh, year and a half during this pandemic period. I'm not surprised as well by this, um, and uh, Disney's got to be happy with that. But also, I don't know at this point if Encanto's going to get to $100 million with Sing 2 right around the corner. I'm not sure Encanto will get to that mark, which Disney might be disappointed by. A film that has passed the $100 million mark is Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is up to 112. It earned another $7.1 million this weekend for Sony. House of Gucci with 4.1, it's at 41. Uh, Resident Evil is up to $16 million total. Christmas with the Chosen is at 14 million. Clifford made another 1.3, it's at 47.7. 7. 
Uh, maybe it'll try to make a run at 50. We'll have to see if Clifford can get there for Paramount. Uh, Disney also with Eternals, which made $3 million this weekend. It's at 161 Not all that far behind Black Widow when it comes to that, that box office result. Rounding out your top 10 this weekend, Dune with another 857000 It's at 106 for Warner Brothers. And uh, Venom back in the top 10 with 850000 It is at 212 for Sony. So, uh, yeah, Venom returned because a couple films left the top 10, including King Richard, which hasn't made a whole lot of money. But again, I think Warner Brothers says we've got a Best Actor frontrunner in Will Smith. He should get a Best Actor nomination tomorrow from Critics' Choice. If he doesn't, it will be a big surprise. Six years ago, when he was in the conversation for Concussion, he did not get a Critics' Choice nom. His only nom was from the Hollywood Foreign Press, the Golden Globes for a concussion. A film that also opened this weekend that did not do well is National Champions. This uh, so-so football drama with J.K. Simmons, Stefan James, Uzo Aduba, who's very good in it, only made 300,000 bucks in more than 1,100, almost 1,200 theaters this weekend. I don't think there was any marketing. I don't think anybody knows that this movie exists. And I've been reading in some stories and them saying, oh, STX is going to do this major push right around the college uh, football championship, the national championship game for the VOD play and all that. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not feeling if, if it's going to make a whole lot that way. You needed to get people to know that this movie exists and for them to go to the movies and see this. $300,000? Yikes. Some films that opened in, in uh, fewer theaters uh, include Red Rocket, which opened in just a, a handful of theaters with $97,000. Don't Look Up. From uh, Netflix, the Adam McKay movie that I have seen that I don't think is very good outside of the score. Ahead of its Netflix debut is in about 500 theaters, making about $700,000 this weekend. And being the Ricardos in about 400 locations with about $450,000. Uh, it's in some AMCs, it's in some landmarks, it's in some other uh, chain theaters. What's up, Movies 415? Thanks for being here on LCJ Live. So being the Ricardos did okay. Don't Look Up did okay. Um, but not spectacular numbers for those in their limited starts. Uh, as I mentioned, it is the 98th birthday of Bob Barker, that Happy Gilmore cameo, which we're talking now 25 years ago. Amazing. Uh, is one of the uh, most uh, quotable and one of the most popular movie cameos of all time. You now they just had the Price is Right 50 Years special. Shellfish Beach, how you doing? They just had the Price is Right 50 Years special. Bob, unfortunately, wasn't on it, but I hope he's having a nice, safe, happy 98th birthday. It's a big week for movies. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home opens this uh, Thursday at about 3 o'clock in theaters around the country. Also, Nightmare Alley, the Guillermo del Toro film I have seen, which I don't think is very good. Middle section's okay. The outside sections are not great. Uh, that opens actually Wednesday night. Searchlight's doing Wednesday night preview showings around the country. There are also preview showings this week uh, for a journal for Jordan today and American Underdog later this week. Um, and uh, also Rumble, the uh, animated wrestling comedy on Paramount Plus this Wednesday, December 15th. I talk with the director, Hamish Grieve. You can read that animationscoop.com Q&A right now. LCJ Q&A podcast episode for that drops tomorrow. Fun conversation with him. Working with Terry Crews, working with Tony Danza, Michael Buffer, the WWE. Great conversation with Hamish Grieve uh, for Rumble. Check that out. Also opening in select theaters, The Tender Bar, which I have seen. It's the new Ben Affleck film um, and directed by George Clooney for Amazon. Goes to select theaters this week. It'll be on Amazon Prime Video in January. Ben Affleck's pretty good. Will he get into the supporting acting actor conversation? I mean, he's in the conversation. Will he get some nominations? I don't know if he'll get one tomorrow from Critics' Choice. We'll have to see how things are going. Um, but he's pretty good in it. And uh, it, it's it's a nice film. It's not an extraordinary film. It's got some issues to it. But it's it's nice. Swan Song is on Apple TV Plus this Friday. Mahershala Ali, Glenn Close. I have seen this. Um, didn't love Swan Song. It's got it's got some problems too. It tries. It it does. But it it's got some. It's got a good concept. The execution has some flaws. Blarky Blark, thanks for being here on LCJ Live. So, got a bunch of new movies for TV before we get to awards nominations. TV, Miss Universe is tonight at 7 on Fox. It's Steve Harvey. And American Auto, the new comedy from the creator of Superstore, is on NBC. Um, I think that's tomorrow night, I believe. It's either tomorrow night or Tuesday night at 10 o'clock. They're doing two episodes of American Auto. Let's talk awards nominations. On Friday, I submitted... 
Uh, was it Friday? No, it was thurs uh, Thursday. On Thursday night, I submitted my ballot for the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. The deadline was Friday. I had a feeling Matrix wasn't coming. Well, unfortunately, Warner Brothers didn't send it in time. So I submitted my ballot. I don't reveal who I put on my ballot, but I will say this. I will be surprised if many of the choices that I made on the ballot actually get nominated because it's one of those years where I think a lot of films from early in the year and a lot of films even in this award season that I really like and performances I really like aren't going to get in because a lot of other films and performances that a lot of other people like for some reason are going to get nominated. So it's one of those years. We'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be fun. Noon Eastern tomorrow for the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. Ten nominations for Best Picture. The acting tends to range. Sometimes it's six. Sometimes it's seven. Uh, we'll have to see how the numbers are for that. Animated Feature. Sometimes it's five. Sometimes it's six. Song will be really interesting. Um, Bono could get in. Beyonce. Van Morrison. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, Billie Eilish. Ariana Grande. There's a lot of big names that could get into that original song category this year. And then on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the Independent Spirit Awards nominations are out. And this is actually where I think a few of my favorite performances could sneak into this, like Olivia Munn and Violet and a few others, depending on what they saw and what they liked and what qualifies these days as an independent film. There have been some controversies over the years about, oh, was your budget $20 million? Was it twenty five? Was it nineteen point nine? To, to make that, uh, to really qualify it as an independent film. A film like Red Rocket, which I guess the budget was only a million bucks on that, which is unbelievable. Um, and I didn't love Red Rocket. We, I talked with Mike Sargent, co-host of Too Fast, Two Films podcast. That new episode should be up soon at TooFastTwoFilms.com. We talk Red Rocket and West Side Story. You know, Simon Rex will probably get an Independent Spirit Award nomination Tuesday if he doesn't get one as well from Critics' Choice tomorrow. Uh, the most competitive category I feel like this year, at least in my book, in terms of how I tried to narrow down a bunch to just three, because Critics' Choice, you just submit three, you submit five for Best Picture and three for, for the acting, uh, was lead actor. I had about eight or nine lead actors, and I, did, did, I had to decide, okay, how do I narrow this down? Which three am I going to go with? And that was kind of tough. The others was maybe four or five max in the acting categories. Again, there were some that I loved that I know I had no chance of getting in, so I had to figure that out a little bit. Um, but that lead actor category is competitive. There will be some big ones who are left out. There will be probably for lead actress, too, but you know, Kristen Stewart, I'm not a huge fan of her performance in, in Spencer. Same with Nicole Kidman in Being the Ricardos, and, and even Jessica Chastain in The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, so yeah, we will see how, how things turn out. Critics' Choice nominations tomorrow noon Eastern. Spirit Awards nominations, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And then next week on the 21st, it's a doubleheader, Annie Awards nominations and the Academy Awards shortlists for categories like animated short film and many others. That Those shortlists will both be revealed uh, on Tuesday the 21st. So looking forward to all of that. Did you go to the movies? Did you see West Side Story? What would you think of it? Just have you seen anything else? Let me know here in the comments section for LCJ Live. Uh, I've got a rapid review up at lights-camera-jackson.com for National Champions. Also written reviews of Being the Ricardos and Nightmare Alley, if you want to check those out as well. Uh, closing in. Believe it or not, I saw 230 new movies last year. I am almost to that mark once again this year. Am I going to get there? Am I going to surpass that 230 movie mark? Uh, we will find out over the next couple of weeks, today being December the 12th. We've got a few weeks to go left in 2021. And then here comes 2022 with hopes of positivity and hope uh, for, another, for a good year and a positive year and another good movie year uh, for 2022. Did you see anything? Are you surprised by some of these box office results for films like West Side Story? See, I'm not. I mean, once we saw the In the Heights number um, this summer, you knew people weren't in the mood for a musical even in the summertime. And then Dear Evan Hansen was was uh, even worse. Dear Evan Hansen, they're, they're only putting up the song for Dear Evan Hansen, the anonymous ones. Everything else, any of the actors or anything, I don't even think Universal's pushing any of them. I, I really don't. How do you think the Spider-Man box office will be, says DJ Rachopo? It's, um, it's a tough call. Because on the one hand, you could say, well, everybody wants to go. They want to see it right away. They want to see it as soon as possible. On the other hand, are some people going to wait? Would they rather see Matrix? 
Um, I, I think Spider-Man's going to do well. Will it open to more than the $90 million that Venom made? I'd like to say yes, but there are no guarantees this, these days. But I'd like to say yes, because Sony will have it on as many screens as they possibly can. As many show times as they possibly can. Will they be able to prevent um, online spoilers and things on social media? No. I mean, people are going to probably put stuff out immediately. I think the premiere's tomorrow night. And you know somebody's going to say something. We, we saw that with Eternals already, that they spoiled the end of that. So that's going to be tough for people. If people see the spoilers, will any of them say, eh, fine, then I'll wait. I'll wait till it comes out at home. Um, so I, I'd like to say that it will make $100 million. It'll be a huge headline if it makes $100 million. Sony giving it as many opportunities and chances for that to happen as possible by starting it Thursday at 3 and counting all that money, Thursday from 3 on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, to get to $100 million. It will be a huge milestone for this pandemic period. It will be big for Sony to top themselves after Venom. And uh, it'll show, you know, those movies are back headlines again. It goes up and down and up and down. But again, people shouldn't be surprised by how West Side Story did. So yes, I, I think Spider-Man can do it. If there's any movie that's going to do it, it's Spider-Man. Sing 2 will do well, but 270, like the first one did, it's not going to happen. I think Universal has to know that's not going to happen. I had a great conversation with the director of Sing 2, Garth Jennings. You will get that Animation Scoop Q&A and LCJ Q&A podcast episode later this week. Um, Sing 2 will do well for families, but if it comes close to that 270, I won't be surprised. I mean, hopefully it can at least get to 100, maybe top what Encanto has done. That would be nice over the long holiday stretch. Depends on how many families really want to go see Sing 2 and how many already went over the Thanksgiving weekend. That money will count, but how many already went? How many want to see it for a second time? How many want to see it for the first time now? How many want to go at all? That's, that's a big question. Warner Brothers with a big question mark for Matrix as well. How much money will that make? I mean, we, we've got three movies that can make a lot of money. We've got Spider-Man, we've got Sing 2, and Matrix. You know, American Underdog will do okay. Um, a Journal for Jordan will make a little bit of money. But if you're talking what's left, I have also seen The King's Man. I'm, I'm really not allowed to say my thoughts on The King's Man yet. That may make some money. I don't know if people, because it's a prequel and it's not ex the Colin Firth and it's not exactly The King's Man that we've seen the past two times, I don't know if as many people will go to this King's Man movie. So I'm not even going to think that that may get to $100 million. If it does, great. Disney will be happy. But I'm going to say your three shots at a $100 million, your one shot at a $100 million open is Spider-Man. Your two more shots at a movie making at least $100 million are Matrix and Sing 2 when it comes to the rest of the calendar year of 2021. Will they do it? It's, it's, I think Matrix can do it. I think Sing can do it as well, but, but Sing's a little more of a question mark than the Matrix. So that's where we're at. Hope you enjoy the nominations tomorrow for Critics' Choice. And Spirit Awards on Tuesday. LCJ Q&A podcast episodes for the directors of Rumble and Sing 2 this week. And uh, I'll have my thoughts on Spider-Man as well and more later this week. As always, go to lights-camera-jackson.com. Be sure to follow me on Twitter here at LCJ Reviews and Instagram at lightscamjackson. Appreciate you watching today's episode of LCJ Live. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive. Abide by your movie theater's guidelines, especially if you're in... The state of New York, and you got to wear a mask during the movie, wear that mask during the movie. Don't cause any problems for the workers. It's going to be a busy weekend for the workers uh, with Spider-Man coming out, and um, they, they will appreciate your cooperation very much. Take care. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next Sunday at noon Eastern. Bye-bye.